This is the beautiful world of an art that has existed for centuries, spanning from the rise and fall of the six dynasties all the way till present. Welcome to the world of Chinese opera. My name is Daryl. I'm the Chief Secretary of the Year One Cantonese Opera Association Kuala Lumpur. Okay. Beside me is Madam Yong. Okay. She is the Vice President of the Association, as well as the CFO for all of our members and students here. Daryl Leong is one of the organizers and representatives of the Yuet One Cantonese Opera Association in Kuala Lumpur, one of the few that is still active in Malaysia. Cantonese opera has a very strong origin, uh, tracing back from the Peking opera trade. Where it, you know, it began to transform into the local people language dialect, and it became Cantonese opera. And then, uh, along with you know how Malaya, Malaysia came about, you know mm. we have Chinese uh, workers coming yes. down to as as miners and things like that. And together with that, they brought down the culture, they brought down the the entertainment from the homeland in China. Mm. So and then Cantonese opera passed down to Nanyang at the time, which is what Malaya was called at the time. So along with mm -hmm. yes, along with all this traditional musics and cultures and belief and religion they came down to to, uh, to Malaya, to Malaysia. Cantonese opera were brought over from the first wave of Han settlers that immigrated to Malaysia during the early 15th century due to the marriage between Sultan Mansur Shah and the Chinese princess Hang Li Po. Most of these early settlers were hard laborers such as miners and couriers. There was also a lack of entertainment and the need to remind themselves of their culture and heritage. Chinese opera became the preferred choice. The performers would make use of a white powdery makeup that became a hallmark tradition in Chinese opera, along with red highlights and heavily accentuated brows. Its look was symbolic and recognizable throughout the world. The costumes worn by them would be just as intricate. Countless months would be used just to prepare them as most of them are handmade and not mass-produced, giving each piece a unique look and feel to them. Once they are ready, however, it would be worth the wait, as it allows the performers to stand out and shine during the show. The performances themselves are not just a form of entertainment, it is a form of education. Each story would carry a message to the audience that varies, to be humble, to be charitable, or to instill some form of hope for those who are struggling in their everyday lives. The set, stage, and instruments that accompany a typical Chinese opera are also important as it helps deliver the message to the audience and is a key part to maintain their interest with the performance. However, as the years go by and technology starts to develop at an unprecedented rate, so do other forms of entertainment. Computers and the more recent smartphones are all forms of technology that gives us entertainment. But one of the largest forms of entertainment that has developed over the years was the cinema. Large budget Hollywood movies are now what we consider to be a norm. But now, Chinese opera is at risk of being forgotten by the newer, more tech-oriented generation as they are fixated on their phones, computers, and the endless possibility of the internet, they simply no longer have the patience to understand this dying art. Language itself has been simplified to be more efficient, so much so that people struggle to understand what the performers are singing about during the performance. All of this, and the fact that it is viewed as something very traditional, has put Chinese opera under the label of old people's hobby. Kids simply don't want to be a part of this world, as they would want to follow their friends into other hobbies that are more relevant. Ask any of them what they want to be when they grow up, or what they'd like to do as a hobby, and very few would say they want to be a Chinese opera performer. The amount of dedication and determination required simply do not align with what they are willing to give.
Despite all these obstacles, there is still hope. In order for Chinese opera to survive, a mental overhaul of the public is required. And it's people like Daryl Leong and the performers of the Yue Wan Cantonese Opera Association that give soap to this art, as they battle overwhelming odds to make this art form relevant again. To remind people of the importance of tradition and the history it holds. To inspire a newer, younger generation of performers that they can pass the torch to. To bring back life to a slowly dying art. The challenges that we face with people, with the community, or with the local authorities, or with the government is that they don't see us. We are not visible enough. Hopefully in the near future that all this small and big association, Cantonese Opera Association, will come together as one.